so um, Jim Graham is a photojournalist who's based in Centerville, Delaware. He was nominated for the Pulitzer Prize while he was at the News Journal and was also named Southern Photographer of the Year at the Southern Shore Course. He has worked with AP, UPI, Bloomberg News, Time, Sports Illustrated, Vanity Fair, Newsweek, and Town & Country, just to name a few publications. His uh, fine art photography is shown in many galleries throughout the United States, including Hardcastle Gallery, Graphicus Gallery, and Seven Seas Gallery. For more information, we posted in the promo offers off to the right. I'll turn that on in a bit. You can, there's a link over to his uh, fine art photography where prints can be purchased and you can browse some of his portfolio. So with that, uh, welcome, Jim. Thank you for having me. I was looking the other day uh, around the house and I ran across a letter from one of your old colleagues. And I want to say that uh, I think this was about, I think it was dated either 2005, maybe 2004. And it was my first introduction to Moab. And that was an awfully lucky day for me to start, to start printing on the paper. Um, because printing had always been such an important part of my process when I was working in a darkroom. And that was sort of the transition to when I started printing uh, with an inkjet printer. So thank you. Great. Thank you. Looking forward to your presentation. I've seen, I've been viewing you, we've been friends for many, many years. And every time you show me your new portfolio, I'm stunned. And I think that we're all going to be stunned by what we're going to see today, as long as the story is behind it and what kind of brought you to where you are. So I'm looking well, forward to this. And t today is part of my my work uh, are part of my work images. Uh, as, a wedding I, as a wedding photographer, I do all different kinds of photography. I'm a generalist. That's what I had to be at a newspaper. It's what I am continued to do. So there are days when I am out doing marketing photography. There are days when I'm doing landscape photography. There are days when I'm just doing portraits. There are days when I'm doing a wedding. Um, so it's very hard to sort of typecast me other than to say that I'm a generalist, I'm a photographer in the truest sense of the word. I'm a problem solver. Um, so th that's the wonderful thing about being a wedding photographer or a wedding photojournalist is that I have to draw on every bit of my instinct and what I've learned over the years to solve all the different problems from portraits to still lives to um, groups to event photography, the whole nine yards. So it's everything, which is what makes it fun. And that day, everybody wants you there, <laughs> which is an awfully nice thing. Um, I do have some sort of specific opinions about wedding photography that maybe aren't as in vogue maybe as today, but I, it's just me. and. I've been doing it for an awfully long time since I was a, I want to say since I was a sophomore in college. And I would say that I have at least 600 under my belt and my, maybe I'm another hundred or so more than that, really. Wow. So it's fun. That's great. Yeah. Wonderful. So show us some of what you have. Show us your well, here you go. I'm going to share this screen. So I'm going to sort of go away at least big. And there's that. Well, and tab. And so, and I'm just going to hit play. And so this was one of, and I, I know that Moab has used this particular image uh, in the past, one of my favorite images. Um, it just, it just really kind of um, shone for me and it just, it really, really worked. And then this image also. Most of my photography isn't set up at weddings. These two were. With portraits, you sort of have to guide uh, your subject many, many times. Um, and in this case, I had a style and a look that I wanted to go after. And I try to do this for this particular image for many of the brides that I photograph. Um, and I just think it's really successful. And there's so much attention paid to the bride's dress, the bride's makeup, the bride's flowers, the bride's this and that, that you, at least in my mind, want to try to document 
those little things for her and for her fiance slash husband. And part of it, of what I do at a wedding is I really like going to rehearsals. It lets me go and get to know the couple even more uh, and uh, catch fun little moments. And that's the thing that's most important to me are finding moments. Um, again, I'm not as interested in setting up uh, an image, but more partly because I, I don't think I'm a great director. I, I, I think I'm much better being quiet and seeing that I am making suggestions like go here, do this, go here, go to that. And maybe it's that I feel like I'm not creative enough to create all of that in my mind. This was right after a rehearsal when a bride and, when bride and group that had taken me down to Puerto Vallarta uh, went and jumped in the pool and just a nice quiet. It was an afternoon day, very foggy and hazy off in the background, um, late afternoon. And so that's where that came from. But it's, it's, it's indicative of some of the things, the things I do in terms of its graphic qualities um, and graphics composition moment are, are all very, very important to me. Again, another moment image, this time of the bride getting ready. Um, I tend to uh, think of my weddings as a full day. I want to do usually eight hours, if not more with the couple. Um, and from that moment that the bride starts to get ready um, to a moment when either they're going to leave if they're going to make a grand exit, or um, I see that it's, it's time to leave the bride, her husband, and their guests with a bit of dignity and um, make a, a, a beat a steady retreat. Again, looking for little moments as she's getting ready. Um, that's important. If I, and I will say this. If I have time jumping between where the bride and the groom are, I want to do both. I want to photograph the bride and the groom um, getting ready. I want to photograph um, each sort of everything because in my mind, I want to create an album afterwards. It's not just about the individual print which or individual image, which is very, very important, but it's also about creating an album um, that you can print later on. And sometimes it works best when you sort of turn away and include uh, different parts of uh, the bride's uh, um, galleries, but not you can see there's sort of a mess over on the bed. Um, there's some photographers that try to clean all of that up. I'm not really one of them. Um, I Again, it's about staging. I, I'm not crazy about staging. I want to make the image as clean as I can. But that's what's there. Uh, back in my youth, I went to a uh, school at the Missouri Workshop, uh, which was a great photojournalism school at the time. And they also had uh, classes that didn't go for the entire program. It was just a, a week long class and it was about truth through the camera. So I'm, I'm trying to be as truthful as I can in these weddings. You know, it's, it's about finding nice little moments. She's, she's literally looking out at, um, all the people that are gathering uh, in the uh, in the garden where she's going to be married. So she's doing she's looking out just as she might or just before she went down to uh, to get married. Do you have these shots, this image in mind prior to the wedding day, maybe during your rehearsal or was most of your work um, day of? There are always pictures you have in mind. I don't have specific imagery in mind per se. I know that I have some have tos. Um, as with any wedding, uh, you know, I think it's really important to do the getting ready part because I think that there is a transformation. It's a transformational um, moment for both the bride and the groom. It's a, it's a growing period of life. Um, 
I I I felt as though, and and I hope this doesn't sound too trite, but I've I I felt as though I have watched some of my younger brides uh, go from that moment of being a little girl into making a transition into being a woman, going from their daughter to his wife. Um, and maybe that's kind of old school and um, whatever, but it, 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 you can see it. Um, you can see sort of this, this, I don't want to say aging, but, but it's a coming of self, I guess. Um, I'm always looking for them getting ready, a portrait. Um, I look for pictures, and you'll see them in a second, of the flowers. Details are important. Um, and in today's world with social media, having those details that um, if you're able to form partnerships either with venues or with florists, um, that can all be very important. Uh, a picture of, of the dress in either with her in it or it hanging, I think is really, really important. Um, getting ready. And, and sometimes this is her father helping her do her shoes. And sometimes you get little gifts. I didn't see the dog in the background, but you know, in our wedding meetings, the, the groom and the bride kept talking about how wonderful this dog that they had was. And they were debating whether or not they wanted the dog in the wedding actually walking down the aisle with the bride. Um, and um, anyway, I managed to get the dog in the background and the bride just loved that picture. And I, I, I never saw the dog. I was too busy trying to focus on the, the gentleman's hands um, and try to get that right. And sometimes you have brides that just want to play beforehand. Uh, Halsey was one of those. But right after that, she ran upstairs to the dressing room and sat down outside of it while all of her bridesmaids were getting ready. And she was sitting in front of a window. And that happened. And I've always just loved this on any number of levels. So many times brides spend so much time trying to find the right shoes and they, they just, you know, all are about their wedding, wedding shoes. And the glitter coming off the reflection or the reflection coming off the shoe onto this wall from the window just just so worked for me. It just it was a it was a really nice moment and one that I didn't have to affect other than after she heard me take a couple of pictures, she kind of looked at me like, what are you doing? And started to move. And I said, don't move. And I made this one more frame. And that was all I needed to do. And it was just it was just lovely. The other thing that you've always got to look at or look for, too, is so many times um, in younger people's weddings and in some uh, more mature weddings, kids and little images like this. Uh, just, uh, you know, it, it's going to get they're going to either buy a print of that or they're going to immediately want that in their album, especially if it's a. Uh, a child or grandchild they're just it's just it's a given things like this little guy um and again the composition of this you know you, you i don't know how you prepare for it other than you prepare your eye over and over again to compose quickly because you don't know that this is going to happen this is them literally walking down the aisle and you don't know what's going to happen. You, you practice enough and it's finding again, finding moments and then getting lucky enough to be in the right place and composing. And sometimes, and the next picture is the same thing. You know, you just get a marvelous, um, kind of look back from that child. And sometimes they just have amazing eyes. And that's really important for me with many of my portraits is the eye contact, because I think so many times when you um, do a portrait, if you're photographing a person and there isn't eye contact, the viewer won't have eye contact. And I think that that viewer loses a little bit of of um, interest in what's going on if they don't have the eye contact, just as 
if I'm having a conversation with you and I don't have eye contact with you, I think that that interest kind of goes away. And this is an older wedding, and one can see from the um, one can see from the style where I've put a lot of fog and things like that. Um, it's still a fun image. They loved it. I still like it. I don't know that I would shoot it in the same way, or I shouldn't say shoot it in the same way. I probably would shoot it in the same way, but I wouldn't process it in the same way. I'd, 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 I'd do a little bit something different here. That's actually a good segue to a question that Tammy asked. Sure. And I'll, and I'll get back to Steve. Okay, I'll go back to that real quickly. Then. But um, Tammy's asking, do you do a lot of retouching? Or are you more of a purist, uh, specifically wondering about the silver shoes that you showed earlier with the gold light and the bright mm -hmm. looking at the window in the garden? So this particular image, the only thing that's really done here is saturation and a little bit of a tone curve. The bride here, um, I have, what did I do there? There is a little bit of, I use Nick software. So there is um, a tone curve, some glamour glow that's painted into the windows and around just to soften that out a little bit. Um, and as I remember, I masked the flowers and added a touch of saturation. But other than that, there's, I'm not playing, I don't feel like I'm playing with it too, too much. It's, it's the image is true to what it was. And um, other than the saturation, really the saturation, the tonalities, that's straight. That's straight other than the black and white conversion. Tonal, uh, so, so a tone curve and saturation. Straight as, straight as Dickens. And while we're talking some equipment, mm -hmm. uh, I'll show, I think, uh, your camera bag later, but Stephen's asking. Yep what uh what equipment are you using to shoot medium format no this is all the so weddings are very very fluid and while i own a medium format camera i own a phase one um iq3 um uh it's a 100 megapixel capture i would use it for portraits or for group portraits at a wedding but for these really fluid moments um 100 megapixels is just way too much. I generate between, usually between three and 4,000 images at uh, a wedding. So yeah, it's just, it's it's more than I can afford for hard drives. <laughs> um, so no, I'm using a Nikon, I'm using a Nikon system. Um, today is uh, a Nikon Z7, a, a Nikon D850. And I'll show you this. I've got a picture of the, of what I've got. Uh, an 850, a D5, and a, and a D810. Um, and in my case, I don't use a lot of primes. I use a lot of zooms just because of the mobility. So I'm using, um, a 100 macro and you'll see that, right. You'll see where I use that right here. So ring pictures got to have the macro. So that's when I'm really pretty much pulling out that macro. Then I've got, uh, a, a 14 to 24, two, eight. Uh, a 24 to 70 to eight, a 70 to 200 to eight, and occasionally I'll use my 300 um, to eight. Very rarely, um, most of the time I don't need it. Really, what I'm using is that 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 um, 24 to 70 and the 70 to 200. Those are my bread and butter lenses when I shoot, um, and either with the 850 or with the the D5. And, you know, you only have a second or, I mean, you don't have long to do these, um, these still lifes, you know, you're, you're, you're stuck. Give me the ring, boom, bang, here you go, then hand it right back. There's just one more question on this yep. series of photos before we can move on. Um, sure. Carol had a question about the image of the, the, per, the, the person with the red dress in the background. Personal, just, yeah, right here. Yes, that. Yeah. She says, I'll just quote this, looks like truth to me, and I would not be strongly inclined to remove her, but do you ever? Or would you Probably ever? not. Um, while I have grown in my years working with Photoshop, um, I, I don't see myself as a great retoucher. Um, I do some skin softening, but taking her out in, in this particular thing, uh, no, I wouldn't have taken that out. That would have been, 
it would have been a lot of work. Now, if the bride came to me and said, Jim, I want her taken out, I would have probably found a retoucher and had her taken out, but I wouldn't have done it myself. And quite honestly, one of the things that I like about that is the way that that red dress and those legs push you down into the scene so that her, that object is pushing you downward. The, um, the two arms are pushing you down right to the kid's face and to that smile. If that makes any sense. I hope that helps. I tend to shoot or try to shoot as cleanly as I can. I shoot wide open a great deal. Um, in this case, with, a, with the product kind of things. You know, this could have been just because of what a macro does, that could have been F11, F16, just, it just falls right off. Again, how quickly can you make an image and how do you put it all together and then how do you hand the rings back to the bride and the groom? Because they're always scared to dickens that you're going to lose them or that something's going to happen, and then what do they do? In this case, all this literally is is glass on a side table with a yellow wall behind it and a little bit of strobe. And just, again, glass nightstand. And I, I, that could have even been one of those sparkly shoes behind, but I won't swear to it. I'm not sure what that is back in the background. You've got to get flowers for the florists. And you got to get the dress. This was at the wedding in Puerto Vallarta. And the textural quality of that, uh, that stone in literally what was a sh the shower, that's, that's the shower, um, and it just really made everything pop. And I, the color and everything else, it just really, really worked. There are so many times where you do uh, the picture of a dress hanging in the window and letting the light come through. I think that that's great. It does show translucency. Um, but if I can find a different way to do this picture, I, I, I will want a heartbeat. Again, uh, this was at the Hotel DuPont. Um, and it's what was there. You know, the, again, a lot of guys are going to come and maybe have an assistant and have fancy hangers to hang them on. I don't have that stuff. Uh, most of the time, frankly, I work on my own. I, I, I don't have assistance. Um, I have been a, uh, a second shooter for um, two different photographers, uh, Tanya Malat and Andrew Clark. Both are fine, fine photographers. And uh, there will be a couple of images from one of the weddings that I second shot with Tanya in a little bit. Um, and I think that that's really important to do. Uh, and it can improve what you do as a photographer. You don't always have to be the headliner. Um, and many times, um, I think uh, uh, it's a good thing. And in today's world, where it's harder and harder and harder to book weddings, if you can second shoot, that's great. If it, it Because it, I don't have that kind of an ego that I need to do that. Um, and I, I can tell you a story. I don't think I have any pictures here. Again, address detail. And sometimes the, the details are really important because the, the bride spent so much time thinking about what it is and how she wants to look that day. And finding that little detail for her um, is really, really important. Um, again, it, this putting together shoes and the rings. Um, and so they got a real kick out of this. So the wedding I was going to tell you about where I had a second shooter was in the Plains, Virginia. And it was with uh, Alan and um, Michael Schwartz uh, when I was with the wedding bureau. And I had a job where I knew I was gonna shoot a wedding and it had 650 guests. And I knew that I was gonna need a second shooter. And so Alan and Michael talked to one of the people that was working with them and I got a second shooter. Turned out it was Pete Souza, President Obama's um, um, uh, White House photographer and Ronald Reagan's White House photographer. And that day, I, I was one of the luckiest guys around for that, for having him with me. Um, again, shoes and dress. A little take on the shoes, just, just the detail and abstraction, trying to push 
something into abstraction um, and not always having to show everything I think is important. And it lets the art side of me come out. And sometimes you even shoot his shoes. And shooting flowers, again, is, is very, very important. Um, and pictures like this are great for albums and great for prints. Um, I know that many, many times if the wedding is close by and if it doesn't end too late and I'm not exhausted, I'll come home and start to put my cards into my computer. And in doing so, it gives me a chance to look at imagery. If I see an image or two that I think are worthwhile, I'll make a print. I'll, I'll, I'll pull out um, some of the some of my paper and I, I have a, an Epson uh, 7800 here and I have an Epson, uh, now I have an Epson P800. Um, so I'll either pull out some Juniper or I'll pull out some Entrada or the uh, Somerset Museum rag and I'll make a print uh, or two for the bride and groom and drive them back to the venue if it's not too far um, and um, and give them to them as a sort of a wedding present but also as a thank you because they invested uh, in me they gave me the opportunity to, to photograph uh, their wedding so for me it, it's important to be I think it's always important to be kind and to be generous with your clients you know because they are with you in addition to that Don had a question earlier, which is a good point right now to ask. What sure. do what photographers? What do you deliver to the couple following the event? Prince? So, so Let's my see. my basic package um, is uh, a set of proofs, um, four by six proofs in a leather box. I used to do a proof album, but um, it, it it got a little cumbersome, and so now I, I've got a, a a leather box that I had from a vendor. I do four by six proofs and I put together a, uh, an online gallery of about 800 images. And that's the basic package that I give my bride and groom. Um, if they want digital files, they can either purchase the digital files or if they purchase an album, if purchase a package with an album or just purchase an album a la carte, I then give them um, the files from the day but I don't just give away digital files. Um, I come from a day when I shot a lot of weddings with negatives. I would never really give negatives away. Why would you give your negatives away? Um, one, because you're giving the ability to, to earn your living because part of your living is selling prints. And part of your photography, I think, is you actually creating a print. Um, on, you know, if, if I can go now today, if I can go and make a print today and make a final print today, I'm a happy camper. I really love being in a, what I call my daylight, my daylight dark room, uh, uh, more so than I did being in my regular dark room, uh, back in the day. I just got lonely down in the basement in the dark. This is a whole other ball game. Again, flowers, his flower before her flowers. This was in St. Bart's. Um, I've been lucky enough that I've had a number of weddings that have been out of the country where uh, a bride and groom chose to make that investment in me um, and take me along. And it really paid off. Uh, I've heard so many times when bride and grooms have run into issues with uh, international weddings and um, just that communication back and forth um, you know, calling France or calling Italy and saying, well, where are my pictures versus calling me uh, and saying, you know, Jim, could we get, get together and see a picture? And it's it's an easy it's far easier. Fairly straightforward. This one is processed with, with Nick software and just high key. So it's uh, the initial capture was done in camera raw. Uh, in Photoshop and then bounced over to Nick to Silver Effects, uh, Silver Effects Pro 2 and um, then processed as high key. There's no glamour glow. There's no nothing else. It's just that the simple black and white and backing done. 
This was um, about two years ago. Um, in fact, and this picture, in fact, the florist just called me about this the other day. Again, finding real moments. She just come downstairs. That's her uh, sister behind and seeing her father for the first time. Little again, you can you've seen before. You, I, I like silhouettes. And for me, it's 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 black. I still love black and white. So if I can do black and white, much like the next image that I've got to show you um, and finding different angles, too, that's important. Uh, this this particular image is at Winterter, uh, which is about three miles from me. It's uh, uh, now a large museum of American decorative arts. They have any number of weddings there, uh, and it's a really special place. They've got a phenomenal garden, um, and if you ever have a chance to shoot there, uh, consider yourself lucky. It's a wonderful, wonderful place. This particular bride, this is also at Winterter. Uh, this particular bride and her husband are still close friends. Um, I see her husband occasionally. He has a coffee shop up in Kennett Square. Um, and it's just marvelous to see them and, the, and watch their family grow. I want to say they've got three, three kids, I think, and I'm not, maybe even four. I think three kids. And it's just, it's great to see them. And it's, it's great to still see uh, your brides and grooms and your, your clients. This was out in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Um, and uh, it was just such a unique, wonderful place. And it's, again, finding the, that's the, the groom and his best man back behind, and our, our, the bride. Um, interesting story about these two. Um, they have, uh, they own, now own Cafe Genevieve in uh, Jackson Hole and were on diners, drive ins, and dives. And there's the groom, there's Freddie. And this particular, this is the old bus from one of the old tour buses at Yellowstone that they used. And so it's just finding little bits and pieces of that. That's again, I'm sorry about that. It's finding nice moments um, and that anticip anticipation. Again, available light. I do love available light. I don't use a ton of light when I don't have to. Um, I have. Uh, of late when I'm in tents and at night, um, I do set up some lights. I use uh, a pro photo system these days, a couple of B, uh, B1s or a, B, uh, a B2, uh, B2. Again, kids. And you can see that's with a little bit longer lens and pretty wide open. And all kinds of weddings. And every wedding is different. That's, that's one of the joys of a wedding is everyone's going to be different. Everyone, you're going to have a different venue. You're going to have different people. You're going to have different customs. Um, and it's what keeps you fresh and keeps you going, I think. Um, you can anticipate a little bit, but so much of it is about discovery. And if you can keep a youthful eye um, to your work, it's about that wonder of finding things and um, the wonder of our human experience. So I, that's, I think, what it, what's special. Again, this is that wedding in Jackson. Um, and just getting married in a log cabin. How really wonderful is that? Bride and, grew, or bride and uh, uh, the father of the bride walking down the aisle and just the, the, the expressions. And it's, it's really important too. so many venues, you know, allow you to be up front. Some don't, but when you do, you take advantage of that in, in this case, and I'm about to show you a different one, but what I have taken to do sometimes if there's a balcony, I'll put a pocket wizard, a radio remote control on my camera so that I can shoot from downstairs, but then I'll put a camera on the rail upstairs that I will have pre-focused so that I can make this. So that way I get the best of both worlds. In this case, I've already moved out of the way. Um, again, I'm there to be an observer and I'm not there to be the center of the show. The longer I stay up front, the, uh, the more 
people tend to look at you sometimes. So in this case, I've moved off to the side um, to make a picture from the side, but I'm still triggering that, um, uh, that camera from up above. This is a, a little chapel on a friend's property. And um, it's a really, really special, special place. And um, I kept trying to figure out how I, because it's so small and it's open air, it's how can I photograph the wedding to some extent? And in this case, I talked to the bride and groom beforehand. I'd asked if I could put a couple of strobes in the chapel. And they said, sure, it's fine. It's not a problem. And that's what's going on here. I'm photographing to get the whole chapel, but I've put flash in the chapel, bouncing off the back wall onto them so that I can see them in the, in the chapel. And it really, really helped. And that's what that chapel looks like inside. That's just available light. This particular couple was from Hawaii, lived in Hawaii. Uh, thus the lays and things like this. This is in the Brandywine Valley. Um, and so uh, anyway, it's a, it's a neat chapel. It's a wonderful place. And again, getting, getting the place you are, finding a sense of place. I think that that's really, really important. Sense of place. Each of these goes to contribute to a final album, a final um, uh, story, really. Because that's what you're, I think, at a wedding you're trying to do. Uh, uh, there are lots of different thoughts about weddings today. So many photographers want to do portraits. They want to do the, um, the lit portrait and sort of grand picture. That's not me. I, I'm, I'm after, again, moments. And, 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 and capturing that for this. This is a great image for spreads for your album. So let's say if, if you're working with one of the Flynn albums that, that, that Moab has, this could fill a whole page. If you're selling space per se, uh, and you've got a 40 page album, this is one page, that's a good sale. And that's important because you, know, you do have to, as much as you're, you're photographing for your art, and photographing for your client, you've got to be able to monetize that. And part of monetizing it is selling prints to your clients. I mean, it's how you make a living. When you give a file away, you've just taken part of your ability to make a living away uh, because you've given them the files. Now they'll go out and make prints. And rather than pay you so that you can get better gear or do whatever you need to do or for you to go have a vacation or something. You've just given all that away. This was done in London in Temple Church. Um, if you saw the Da Vinci Code, this is that church. Um, and some people ask me, why are the walls blue? And some of them are sort of what I envision they should be. Well, that's true. But the church is all um, lit with tungsten light. And because there's a dome above this circular um, uh, sanctuary, uh, that's daylight bleeding down. And I love color that I could have taken that blue out. But when I went to white balance it and got the blue to begin with, I just looked at it and went, wow, isn't that kind of fun? So that's why that's that, that way. Um, this next image. I was the second shooter on this wedding. I had more leeway to, not this particular one, but this one. I had more leeway to move around than the primary photographer. That was Tanya Malat. She's a wonderful photographer. And, um, but that opportunity to shoot second camera lets you move, lets you be creative, and lets you find things or find different angles that you might not normally find where you've got, you know, you've got to get specific images like the bride and groom coming down the aisle. Well, I might have only been able to do that head on if I was the primary, but because I wasn't the primary, I could find a different place. 
And that's what's so important. Finding different angles that aren't your, your the, the normal picture that you might normally make. And if you can remember to do that at, a, at your next wedding, is push yourself to move around, to find different angles, to find different ways to see things. I think you always win. Again, a silhouette. Trying to see things differently. So this wedding was done sometime after the wedding in London in Temple Church, where that blue was so interesting to me. And I was younger and hadn't thought everything through, but I did realize then that if I shot, was shooting for tungsten, that I was going to get blue. So I put a tungsten gel on my my light and in this case i did use a light and then filtered for it so that everything went blue except for them and it just made something different something fun again being a second shooter while the primary was off with the bride and groom and the and some of the bridal party i could be shooting other things Or sometimes when you're the primary and you just decide, you know, they're they're taking their vows. I don't need to totally be glued to them. You can turn around and find fun little moments. And sometimes instead of being tight, and that's my one of my biggest issues for myself is using a wider lens. I tend to see in details. And so I tend to shoot too tightly. And in this case, pulling back made all the difference in the world. But shooting tightly is awfully nice too. Another instance, this is, a, again, another entrance of being the secondary. Uh, uh, Tanya actually was in the, uh, uh, was on the, well, the, I guess, the right-hand side of the image. She's down and under the uh, grapevines shooting up at them while I was shooting up from a hill down and across uh, the vineyard. Back in London again. This is uh, Armourer's Hall in London, uh, a, uh, I think, 15th century um, uh, uh, guild hall. This picture was done at a wedding um, literally uh, not even a quarter of a mile or so uh, away from me in uh, the, the big house to the, uh, to the house that I live in. So, and then... Uh, it was a fun way. And again, flowers, the bride and her flowers and her, and her dress. But sometimes you've got to play a little bit. And so you can the groom the flowers instead. Finding quiet moments of them getting ready for their first dance. Again, something like this makes a great spread in an album or a great print. I think if I remember correctly, I made this print um, on, what did I print this on? I think that I printed this on Somerset Museum rag um, and gave this to them at their brunch the next day. This is a setup, but it was all about the crinkles in her nose. And if I remember correctly, when I did this, I had been looking at a photographer who was it? It might have been Jurvent, um, who is a, an Australian photographer, and he had done something like this. And I thought to myself, God, I think that that's wonderful. I, I, I need to try that. And so I did try this once, and, and it really worked out. And I just loved the fun of it. Um, and I, it made a nice spread in their album as well. Portraits. Got to have portraits. This was done up in Maine. Um, they got married 
and the, um, the, the wedding reception was up the, um, the fjord, well, it's really a fjord. It, this was in Northeast Harbor. And so they took his boat up the fjord to the, to the wedding, which was at a, what was it? It was, it's at a lobster pound that cleans itself up and does a wedding reception. So it was just a great trip. And sometimes you just have to pay attention to what's going on before they go into their reception. This has a little bit of glamour glow to it, but other than that, it's just a straight, the sun's coming right under his hand and it's just, you know, lots of lens flare. Details, 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 details. Uh, a cake, different kind of wedding cake. I've never seen a chocolate wedding cake like this one before, um, but it was important for me to capture. Um, flowers, the way the tables are decorated, real important. The classic wedding cake shot. Uh, when you've got a great grand cake like this, you've got to do the sort of the classic shot, I think. Um, it's a have to, I mean, it is, it really is a have to, but sometimes when your backgrounds aren't perfect for me, taking your camera and lifting it up and shooting straight down or at an angle and down on the cake for me, it's a, it's a special, um, it's a really nice way to, to, to render a cake, um, that shows the flowers well, shows the table. You can add some other little accoutrement to it too. Kids, gotta love kids, gotta love afterwards because while everybody else is off doing whatever they're gonna do at the reception, the kids are just gonna go and play and have fun. And one day, I, the next picture you'll see, I got a, a call from, my, uh, from Mark and they were about to do a promotion and they needed a, a wedding picture. And I think this was one of the first pictures of mine you used, Mark, or you can remind me on this, but, and it still holds true. It's just fun. It's joyful. Um, big room, single on camera flash and just them having fun. Just fun. Details. Get a ring. flowers, the venue and the bride and groom. And in this case, finally, I convinced myself to pull back, shoot with everything. My, my, my inclination would have been normally, okay, go in tight and shoot on the bride and groom. But from that high vantage point, I could get the whole room. I could see what was special about it. And so I made this but I also need that. And sometimes you don't have to shoot high, you shoot from low and up. And all those circles made it. But shooting tight with the father of the bride, who was a classmate, uh, that was one of the great things about shooting this particular wedding was that there were so many people that I knew at this wedding and um, it was, it just made that special. Um, and watching his joy with his daughter and his father-in-law um, did uh, shot weddings too. And when his father-in-law is no longer with us now, um, you know, so I, I, I felt as though I had a lot to live up, up to, uh, to, to, to match some of his work. And this was just a fun couple and a great night. And the party, you gotta get the party. You gotta get all, all of the fun of the party. That's, I love candids. And so getting away from the pose stuff and shooting these kind of things, I would have really liked too. It's great to get into this scrum and, and to, to make images like this. But in this venue, as I look at it, 
it would have been great to get up on the balcony and shoot that. It's just, you just don't know which way they're going to turn. So being down there, at least that way you can get through. And sometimes brides do fun things to their grooms, like smearing their cake, their face with a little bit of cake. And then the party cuts loose. And the kids get tired and they want to wrap themselves up. I'm going to skip through the next slide because it's a duplicate. Sorry about that. But you've always got to get, I'll go back to this one. You've always got to get a musician, I think, to let, let them know that, you know, you covered that part. Of it. But it's how you do it and, you know, do something that's a little bit more creative. I wanted to show you this one just because there are times that you can, you've got to be careful and you've got to shoot with enough shutter sync. The guy behind me who wasn't working with me, he was just a, working with me, he was just a friend, but he was shooting with flash and he and I just happened to hit the strobe at the same time. And it almost killed me because you can start to see where the camera recorded uh, the ghost of his hand and the the other couple frames that I made where, where I caught his flash too, they were totally unusable. So you've got to be aware. You've got to be careful. Again, shooting from above. Finding moments. This was in Puerto Vallarta. More fun. And every once in a while, it just gets crazy. And then there's an exit. I go back and forth about the right way to shoot this. Sometimes I think just a straight recording like this is great. Other times I think if you make this and then maybe add some zoom. It's just how do you do it the best way to record um, and think about how you're going to use it later. The exit's always important. And so is the goodbye. And the thing that I really loved about this was their rings. I could see their rings as they were leaving as man and wife. Um, and that's it for wedding pictures per se. This next frame is, you asked about my kit earlier on, Mark. Here's my kit. This is what I use. Simple, easy, um, not too heavy. Um, and for the most part, quite honestly, I probably will only use two, maybe three of those bodies. There's a, that fourth is for backup, two strobes. Uh, those are A1s. Um, um, I probably today, if I had the, had a little extra money, would get an A1X, um, or two A1Xs. Um, and I probably would get the little C1 too, the little dome, uh, thing that would be, I think, great for the rings. It would make my life a little easier. Um, lots of memory cards and then um that's the 14 to 24 24 to 70 100 millimeter macro or 105 millimeter macro and the um 70 to 200. Great. what else can i answer um we have a few minutes left just wanted to mention uh, i put up a new offer up on if you click on the tab there we're offering a free ebook uh download on fine art printing written by uh, Lester Picker, one of our other Moab masters. Mm -hmm. uh, click on the link and it'll bring you over to a page where you just put your email address in and then you can download the book. It's 164 pages fully illustrated. It's absolutely free and there's some great tips in there. Um, just one question to kind of uh, end the note on, on, end the day on, is that uh, post-production, there are a couple of questions. Sure, post -production. happy to what, throw any questions you want. I, I'll ask you what I answer whatever yes. I can. You mentioned Nick software, or yep. whatever, are you using Lightroom, Photoshop to go through and, and then just 
maybe touch on the paper choices. You mentioned um, Somerset Museum rag, Juniper is your two favorite ones. Yep. I also know yep. you use Centrica as well. It's anything that you have um, on that. So post-processing, um, I started out and I would use Lightroom for uh, sort of a, as a batch processor. I was never real big on uh, Lightroom as a total digital asset management person. It just, it, it didn't work for me. I, I, I did it, did things differently. And then I uh, sort of started grabbing uh, lots of files or individual files and I would pro process those in Photoshop. Of late though, I've been using um, a session uh, workflow in Capture One, in Capture 120. Um, and that seems to really be working. I still will finish a file if I'm going to do some things, I've, I've never been good on styles. I've never been good with presets. They just never really work for me. So I'll go in and work a file in Photoshop and I use Nick. I use exposure five. Now um, I've got luminar four. I don't use it all that often. Um, and Photoshop that, and that's what I use is capture one, uh, sometimes Lightroom, not that often but mostly Capture One, Photoshop, and I use the, I use that Nick software and the um, uh, Exposure 5 a lot. That's important. Um, printing, uh, I'll make all of my prints in, in and out of Photoshop. That's, tend to, that's where I have my, my most success. Again, I'm using an Epson 7800 um, and I'm using a, a, P, uh, a P800. Um, I do, um, I do, uh, uh, work with that a lot. Um, and I, 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 I take classes, you know, so that I learn and that that's really important, I think. Um, and I, and now too, I'm teaching a class or two, uh, up in main media, which is really um, a great opportunity since that's where I got my start. Um, I don't know. What else can I ask? What, what else can I, and I've lost video, I've lost audio on you, Mark. So, um, Nope, I've still lost it. Anyway, I'll keep going. Um, uh, I think every print, every image has a desire. If, if you're going to print them, everyone will tell you what you need to print it upon. Some will tell you that I need to be on a cotton rag. That's going to be for me. That's going to be either the Entrada or the Somerset Museum rag. I, For me, I love the the smoothness and the the cleanness of that Somerset Museum rag. Um, and I've been accused printing of it that it looks like a painting. And you know what? I'm fine if people start to think it's a painting. Since it came out, I can tell you too that I use the juniper paper, which is a, a completely different animal to me than the Somerset Museum rag. It's a little bit more photo emulaic. So for some pictures that need to really look much more like a photograph, uh, I might might use that. Um, I love what it does with color. I love what it does with the darkness of the black and that saturation. So I, if that helps at all, I think we're good. <laughs>